We've got a system here with two click PLCs hooked together through a serial communications cable. And one of these PLCs over here has a counter instruction. We can see it right here. And if you activate the X1 switch, it makes the counter increment. So 9, go ahead and do that again. 9, 10, 11, okay. And then uh, what that counter does, we take the, uh, the current count value, the accumulated value of that counter, and we force that into a single uh, width word, so a 16-bit register, because naturally this is a double width, um, double precision. So what we're doing here is forcing it to be a 16-bit instead of a 32-bit, and that's so we can ship it over using a Modbus instruction in the other PLC. This PLC is set up as a slave in the Modbus network, and so it's going to be uh, read by this PLC over here. So we come over to the master PLC, and the master PLC also has its own counter instruction. It's counting events right here. I can activate, uh, I can activate, there we go, there's the right switch. I can activate X2 on this PLC. We can see it increment up as well, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the purpose of this program is this master PLC will compare the two PLC's counters. So it's going to compare CTD2 right here with the DS1 register it's grabbing from the slave PLC using the Modbus instruction. Now something else we've got going on is not only is the master PLC reading from the slave over there using Modbus, but we're also writing a bit to reset the counter in the other PLC. If I go back to the slave, what we see is that the slave PLC in the counter instruction has a C4 bit acting as the reset. That C4 is actually being written by the master PLC through a different push button. So looking at the Modbus instructions now, we see two Modbus instructions here. One is a receive. <coughs> the receive instruction said, okay, Modbus function code number three, I want to start at slave address DS1 and bring that data, or as you recall, that was the count value of the counter in the other PLC. It's going to bring that value into the DS1 reg register right here and that's going to be used to compare against this counter. The send instruction is going to write the status of uh, switch X4 to the C4 bit in the slave PLC telling it to reset. So notice I can take a look at my two counters, 12 in the slave PLC, 10 in the master. When I hit the X4 push button right here, we're going to see those go to zero. Both counters get reset. The counter in the master PLC gets directly reset by the X4 bit. The counter in the slave PLC gets reset by the C4 bit that we're sending over using the Modbus command. Now what I want to show you now is just a, a prelude building up to the main point. The main point is how we're able to synchronize these two instructions. We have a receive and a send, and we cannot simultaneously receive and send. It's not a full duplex network, it's half duplex. So the way we do this is very crude, very simple. We use a rising edge clock contact here and a falling edge clock contact here. SC5, special contact number five in the click, is a 100 millisecond clock. So every 100 milliseconds, we get a rising edge and a falling edge here. And because this is rising and that's falling, these two instructions never go at the same time. They each take turns. This is not the most sophisticated way of synchronizing uh, send and receive instructions, but it does work. And for the purpose of this illustrative example, uh, performs the task quite nicely.